than this guy, but he sets a high bar. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited to be here. Um, Wayfair has hosted a few of these creative mornings. I never imagined I'd be speaking at one, but here we are. Um, is anyone from Way Wayfair here besides? Oh. Ooh, how are you? I know, Yinka. Uh, we're on the same creative team. So, um, so I work for Wayfair. Um, I'm a UI designer. I work mostly with um, the mobile app team. I work mostly with iOS, uh, a little bit of Android, some mobile web, and I do a little bit of desktop and random projects, whatever they throw my way, right? You understand, right? Um, Wayfair is an awesome company. If you're not familiar with Wayfair, uh, we have a pretty large presence in Boston, and we're e-commerce for anything home. So if you're looking for something for your bedroom, for outside, for your home, anything you want, we can probably provide it for you. Um, so getting into this idea of mystery, I was thinking how does this relate kind of to my day-to-day -day work life? Um, and I think you, Yinka would agree, or anyone that does UI or anything creative really, um, part of our everyday role is to kind of decode a mystery with our users. Um, it's really important to let our users guide us in all the work that we do. We're trying to solve these issues and make their lives better, and that's what I'm kind of doing every day with the app. So we have a lot of projects going on, like messaging is a big one for me that we're working on. So trying to get our consumers the information they need um, in a space that's typically, you know, I would go to a store, look at a bed, buy it, bring it home, it'd be great, right? So we're doing all these things all online, and it's a huge challenge, but it's one we embrace fully. Um, it's a, sort of a mystery that we we take on uh, with bigger every day. So you may have seen some of our commercials. Everyone loves the jingle. They either love it or hate it. They always remember it, regardless of how they feel. Um, so again, we're trying to uh, really tap into our users and figure out how to create the most frictionless and delightful experience that they could possibly have. That's a phrase that we use a lot at Wayfair. Another way I think about mystery, does anyone know who this is? Is anyone <laughs> uh, You're a fan, we're best friends. Anyone else? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm obsessed with Harry Potter. Oh, uh, I like to, you know, how can you resist Harry Potter and the Horcruxes? It's like, it's nothing better in life, really. I think of Harry Potter and, and novels and anything, um, does anyone like, uh, mystery shows, murder investigations, and things. Anyone? My mother has me addicted to those. I think of those types of things when I think of mystery, you know, just off the bat. Mystery is one of those things we're trying to get to the center of some question or some some truth. Does anyone know who this is? <laughs> no? no one's seen this. Raise your hand. Thank you. I haven't actually seen this. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> everyone knows the OJ story, right? This is a mystery that we're still trying to get to the center of. Like, who did it? I mean, kind of know, like, OJ did it. But, um, you know, alas, we're still trying to get to the center of this mystery. And they, they tend to be, like, really exciting, trying to get to the core of this, right? Um, mysteries tend to be really exciting, and it's thrilling, even if it ends with blood or gore. You know, we just love it. It's entertaining. 
But uh, it's not that fun with your own life. Does anyone know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like mystery is not that fun when you're dealing with your own life. You know, a big mystery I deal with daily. It's like I leave work and it's like, what am I going to eat tonight? <laughs> <laughs> or asking your boyfriend, your girlfriend, like, what should we eat tonight? It's like the saddest mystery of all. <laughs> oh man. Or what about going to a job interview and they're like. Where do you see yourself in five to ten years? It's like, I don't know where I'll be in two days. What do you mean five to ten years? I don't, how would I know? You have to make something up on the spot. Yeah, mystery is not that fun when you're talking about your own life. It's fun when you're watching Harry Potter, but the journey um, and mysteries and questions you have to answer when you're dealing with your own life, it can be a hard pill to swallow. Um, is anyone a creative here who is interested in lots of different creative areas and you just can't pick one. Yeah, yeah, I struggle with that. That's a big, I, I guess that's why I was picked. I don't know, we'll see in a second. <laughs> um, often the ultimate mystery is oneself. I like, I like this uh, quote. Sometimes um, we're trying to get to the center of who we are and you would think we know ourselves the best, but often um, that's the person we understand the least. But I try to embrace this as much as I can, especially when I was reflecting, what does mystery kind of mean to me? And something comforting, and I, I guess this kind of relates to like me from a faith level and just from an everyday level, I have to see mystery in my life and the, the chaos. I have to look at it as truth waiting to be revealed. So despite all the chaos, I have to think at the end of this, there's some truth that I'm going to get out of this. I don't know if I like that truth, but there has to be something good waiting at the end of all this chaos and mystery. And to get to that, you have to take action, right? Who's, I mean, no one's going to do it for you. You have to kind of take steps and walk through that mystery. You may not know what direction you're going in, but you kind of have to take action. So I'll walk you through a few moments throughout my career. Um, I don't like talking about myself this much, so get bored, I mean, please interject. Um, but I'll uh, just walk you through a little bit about my career, some things that I've done. Um, if you have any questions, please interject, as I said. So phase one, the blissfully naive morning. Yes, it's a good time. Has anyone had a blissful, naive moment in your career? You thought everyone, everything was gonna go X, Y, Z? You're gonna live this incredible, creative life. You're gonna be in 30 under 30. It's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that was me. Yeah. yeah, there's still time. Not 30 yet, but this is my family. I have to throw them in there. Oh, all right. How do I feel? I come from a pretty creative family. Um, my mom, she was always into painting and crafting. Anything. You know, creative that I do kind of started with her. Um, oh, I yet, goodness. <laughs> uh, my older brother, he's an engineer. You know, he's not as, as loopy as I, I am, I would say. Um, I have a twin brother, that's the guy in the middle. He's into music, he's really big into music, so he and I kind of vibe on that level. And then my dad, he's also in music. So I come from a very creative background, but I would say, even coming from a creative family, um, my dad was very passionate that I was going to become a lawyer. Very passionate. Where did this come from? Who told you this? <laughs> you know, there's any of my parents who are like, they know you're creative. They know that it's not in the cards for you, but they want you to go be like a banker or something. Does anyone? No one? No? Thank you. <laughs> so I went on to college. This is me at Georgetown, year one of college. Sad times. Sad times. I don't know who that is. <laughs> <It's sad looking laughs> <girl. laughs> Went on to college, didn't really know what I was going to study, um, but decided, you know, I'm going to follow this creative bug in me, you know. I love dance, I love art, I'm going to explore it a little bit. So here's some of my, like, incredibly profound work that I did <laughs> as a freshman. But don't tell me how much you love it, I don't want to do that. Um, yeah, those, those were sad times, but I knew I was very naive, as I said. I was like, you know, I'm a creative. I'm gonna make this thing work regardless. It's gonna work, I don't know how, but I spent a little bit of time at Georgetown and 
I decided, you know, I want to pursue fashion. So I did what any person who's in fashion would do. Um, I went to upstate New York, <laughs> far away from New York City. <laughs> um, and I transferred to Cornell University. And um, that gave me the opportunity to do things outside of just what a normal fashion program would be. So if I changed my mind, if I wanted to go abroad, I wanted to study calculus, I wanted to do all these other things but still kind of pursue this passion I had um, for fashion. So I like did what any creative with her salt would do. I made some really awful stuff. <laughs> this is awful, guys. This is so <laughs> Have you ever looked back at your work and you're like, I thought I knew how to use Photoshop? <laughs> no, I don't know how to use Photoshop at all. This is terrible. I had to dig for this because I think I hid it way away. I didn't want to confront this. This is like a fashion magazine, I think, that I did my first year of my program. It's terrible. It's so sad. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, as a creative, you have to look back and kind of appreciate where you've come from. I mean, you're not going to get better without being awful first. Uh, here's some more work. Still kind of bad. Got this pizza pizzeria outfit going on. on the not really sure why they made us do that. Yeah. It's really nice. Love it. Um, you know, things were getting better. I was learning how to make clothes. I had, you know, I, does anyone like specialize in all-nighters or did they in school? Anyone? I, yeah, that was my thing. Didn't sleep much at night. Um, but I learned a lot. You know, I learned how to make children's clothing. I learned how to force my cousin, who also went to college with me, into wearing my designs. And, you know, it was a good journey. It was a really, really nice journey. Um, and things got a little better, step by step, step by step. Um, I learned how to kind of do better each semester. But um, as I said, I was really naive. I still was in this place of, you know what? I'm in this fashion degree. I'm going to complete this degree. They're going to love me. I'm going to get a job before I even graduate. And I'm going to just show my collections at Fashion Week at the tender age of 22. It's going to be great, no doubt. Uh, here's some more of my work, just some, some styling work. I was really interested in styling as well. Uh, what else do I have in here? This was my senior year. Uh, I was trying to find a way to kind of incorporate some of my interests. So one of my interests is I've always been into dance. So I was creating this um, line that combines sustainability. So these are all like used sweaters and things that I dyed and turned into other garments. So I'm, I'm trying to be creative. I'm trying to like make my mark. How can I stand out? So this was kind of um, at the end of my senior year. So it was a great journey. I loved my major. I was absolutely naive and excited, and I did it with confidence. I didn't know what was going to happen next, but I did it with confidence, which was so important. This is, um, does this give anyone PTSD? <laughs> yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah. This, is, uh, this is what college was made of. This was like all the time. Uh, yeah, I don't have to explain that much to you guys. You should probably know. Um, yeah, lots of mystery in there, I would say. Um, reality hits, and you realize, wow, this creative thing is hard. This is hard, and it's only going to get harder. Um, reality started to hit. I don't know if I lost my confidence in it. I don't know what happened, but um, as I neared closer to graduation, it was like, what's going to come next for this? This is me graduating. Thank God I graduated. Um, you'll notice. What do you What do you guys notice about this photo? Anything? You're the Anything? Only Thank you. Yes. I began to ask myself. You know, I had always been a minority, but I was like a minority in these situations, <laughs> right? I was the only black girl wherever I was kind of going, like especially in my major. So I started asking myself, you know, why Why is that, and why me? Why Why have I made it to this point? Not that I'm the only black girl in fashion, but why, where's the black girls at? I was just looking for them. So that was kind of a question that I started to ask and has continued throughout my career. So being that um, I started asking myself those questions, luckily enough, these three amazing women came into my life throughout the course of my creative career. Um, this first woman is Brandis Henderson. She started an organization called Harlem's Fashion Row. I don't know if anyone's familiar, but it's this amazing organization um, 
that actually advocates for designers of color and gives them a platform. And she's grown it to this amazing size. She has this amazing podcast now that I listen to. She's just amazing. Definitely suggest checking her out. Um, this middle woman is Audrey Smaltz. She started a um, fashion production company, all pretty much all black women, who go to fashion shows and dress models. So I got an amazing opportunity to work with her. Um, they dress for shows like Victoria's Secret, BT, Grip the Runway, just all kinds of designers all over New York, in New York Fashion Week and even off season. And this third woman, I don't know if anyone's familiar with her, but she's Tracy Reese, a really established black designer. Um, had a great time working her, with her as well, interning with her in New York. So I guess the point of me putting this here is, um, it was so important for me as a black female to see women in a place where I kind of wanted to be. Um, and I think that's important for particularly minorities. And I think that's um, sort of a challenge, especially for younger people who are kind of interested in creative fields. There's really a, um, a lack of almost role models in that space. And I was very lucky to connect with these women and kind of see where I could one day be. So that kind of helped ease my, my questions and um, help me to think about ways I can get more involved in the industry and push for this increased diversity as well. So, um, panic mode, yeah, panic mode. Panic mode sets in, you know, if you graduate from school and you're like, where's my job? I work for this. I work hard, okay? I didn't sleep and I, I work for this. Where is it? I didn't get the immediate job um, that I thought I would. Uh, didn't go to Fashion Week immediately like I thought I would. I did the whole, run in New York and do the interviews and people people love giving out internships. The jobs it's another story. <laughs> so I did what anyone looking to go into fashion would do. And I went to journalism school. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still trying to figure that one out. I am, yeah. So I had these dreams, right? I was gonna be front row at Fashion Week. <laughs> uh, coming out with my girl, Rihanna. Just kicking it. Watching fashion shows. You know, taking out my notepad, taking my notes, and going back and writing this amazing article for Vogue, and you know, just traveling the world. That's what I was gonna do. That was my plan. I was gonna do that, I was gonna be fashion journalism, and if that didn't work out, I was gonna be writing for an amazing fashion magazine. That's not what happened. Um, I realized I hated to write, had no interest in reporting, and I ended up gravitating right back to the design that I know and loved, right? But this was a new medium for me. Um, I was now doing more graphic design. And to be honest, I had, as you saw with the first magazine, right? I did not know what I was doing. Couldn't use the pencil, couldn't do any of that stuff. Did not have any gradients, none of that. Um, but, I started, I, I gravitated right back to design. I started art directing for um, the magazine we had on campus, which was Box Magazine. So some, this is some of the work um, that I was doing. Um, I think it's really important to just do and make, even if you don't know what you're doing, just play along. Just get people to follow you. Just like, come on, we're gonna art direct this. It's gonna be great. <laughs> just believe in yourself, they believe in you too. <laughs> so it started to work out. This, this is my boyfriend, I had to give a shout out to him. He actually went to to school for design, so much of what I know is, has all been bounced up, off of him. He actually knew what he was doing, so I had to shout him out. And this is some of the illustration work that I started to do. Again, like I had drawn growing up, like I kind of did like some stuff here and there, but I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but I just started experimenting. I started experimenting and people were like, oh, that's, that's decent. I was like, is it, bro? Yeah. It's great. I love it too. Why not? Um, so this is some of the early illustrations that I was doing. I was just really loving it. Still confused about why I was in journalism school. If I didn't go to journalism school, I probably wouldn't have the job that I have now. So it, it kind of worked out. So in a time, again, when I was in that program, I was in Missouri, by the way. I didn't mention that. Missouri, again, not, not that diverse. Um, I think I was maybe one of two black people in my um, graduate program. So I'm kind of like, you know, this is great, but like, where are black girls at? Where are they at? I'm just looking around like, where are they, Why, you know? But I got fortunate enough um, 
to connect with, this is um, Lincoln, he actually went to Zoo and started this amazing program, Lincoln and Larry, um, this amazing program called the Marcus Graham Project. I don't know if any of you have heard of it, but it's a program to um, increase diversity in advertising and marketing, which makes total sense because I was in journalism school, so now, now I'm gonna go from fashion to journalism, and now I'm gonna do advertising and marketing, another thing that I know absolutely nothing about. Um, but I was gonna do art direction. Um, it appealed to me because you get to work with a bunch of different brands and kind of flex your creative mus muscles um, in a new and different way. So I did this program. I moved to Dallas, um, was in like this pop-up agency with 14 other people and it was incredible. Um, one thing that I always try to practice is that, has anyone read um, The Year of Yes or heard of it? Ooh, yes. yes. I haven't read it. Oh. So <laughs> yeah, I heard of it. I'm living it, yes, I'm living it. I try to say yes to kind of every, if I can do it feasibly, I try to say yes to it. It's gonna help me build my skill set. I try to say yes to it. So I, I did this program and we got to work with amazing clients. We worked with PepsiCo, Beats by Dre, um, Usher's New Look, which is Usher's um, nonprofit organization. We got to travel all around the country and go to different ad agencies. So we spent time in LA, got to visit Beats and got to visit 72 and Sunny. Um, got to go to Wyden Kennedy in New York bunch of great, great opportunities. Again, um, in an industry that's really not that diverse. Um, but seeing, they connecting with people in this industry through this organization um, and seeing people in places where I didn't necessarily know African Americans were was really a rewarding experience for me um, and just kind of propelled me to keep going and pushing in my career. So here's some of the work that I created um, while I was there. Not for any of the brands that I mentioned, because I don't even know if I can legally show you guys that. But mm. this is just some of the work. Again, just practicing illustrating, just making and doing, um, and not trying to follow any particular rules. Um, here's some more work that I did with them. Just kind of random. Whatever they threatened me, I tried to go along with. So mm. at this point, I'm like, I, Am I a designer now? I, th I think, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I think. I don't really have any formal graphic design training, but I think I've, I've gotten there, right? I'm a designer. But then you hit adulting, right? You get out there, you hit adulting. So after I went to Texas, um, I spent some time back in Baltimore, D.C., just doing some contract work, working with a couple of different brands. And then my manager called me up, he's like, we want you to join Wayfair. We want you to come and do UI. I'm like, what's UI? So I joined my team. I have an amazing manager, um, and I started adulting, right? So I start doing this amazing UI work, and, and Wayfair is a really amazing place that um, allows you to kind of spread your wings and become like a great collaborator. Collaboration is really heavy at Wayfair. Um, and I, I feel like I'm on, a, on one of the best teams. Would you agree? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, so I've been having an amazing time at Wayfair, just learning the skill and I, I love it. It's very different than other design that I've done um, because with UI you have a certain, in a way you have a certain set of rules and constraints you work around and you try to solve for use cases or software user, and again, let them guide you into a solution. Um, so I've been loving it, absolutely been loving it. So what have I learned in this journey? I try to ask myself that all the time. Um, when friends and family, they ask me like, oh, you went to school for fashion, like, what do you do now? And I try to explain that to them, and they're like, how did you end up doing that? Didn't you go to journalism school? I'm like, yeah, no, I, I'm not sure that it makes sense. <laughs> I'm not sure that I can explain it to you. But it all kind of, one thing led into another, and the skill set that I um, have built has been incredible for what I'm doing now. And it also allows me to do things outside of work um, that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Um, I, was, I loved this quote. 
maybe she loved mysteries so much that she became one. I don't think I'm a mystery, I'm not that profound, but um, every time I see family and friends again, they're like, where are you moving to now, Lauren? What are you doing now, Lauren? They just can't, um, do, does anyone have like people who are not creatives in their life and they like totally don't get what you do? They just don't get it. Yeah, that's definitely the case for me. Um, I've been bouncing around not only from city to city, like I went to Ithaca, then I went to Missouri, then I'm in Texas, now I'm in Boston. None of it kind of makes sense, not even to me, but I have to piece it together for those that ask me. But the reality is, with a lot of us, we have all this mystery and chaos in our lives, and I think the reality is that we love it. We pretend that we don't, but we do love it. Um, some of us can do nine to fives and, and something consistent and the same all the time forever, but some of us, you know, we need to mix it up. We can do our nine to five, but we also do, we do our freedom morning events. We do our freelance, we do our traveling, you know, and that's, that's kind of like part of the adventure as a creative. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of a corny quote, I will admit, but I think it's important to kind of embrace that chaos um, because you're, kind, you're building, you're growing, your skill set and your um, frame of reference along the way. And I think that's so very important. It's something I've really had to embrace because for a long time I'm like, what am I doing? I thought I was gonna be a fashion designer and now I'm in journalism school. This makes, again, no sense. Um, and as far as, so that was the, the mystery piece. As far as the diversity piece, um, it's something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm going on about a year at Wayfair as of February 1st. This feels like kind of like a good celebration point um, to spend this time with you this morning. But well, I will say, I will say that um, I think in the last year being at Wayfair, I don't think I've worked with any black people, not once besides Mika. But even like one-to-one -one on a project, I don't think I've worked with a single black person. And that's not a knock to Wayfair. This is kind of like um, an issue that's really throughout design, throughout tech. Um, and even for me, it's not enough for me to say like I care about this issue. It's important for me to find a way to really confront it. Um, and since I've moved to Boston, unlike other places where I've been, I found a way to kind of confront this issue and um, get involved in um, increasing diversity in the industry. But if you are someone who <laughs> works in this area or are really passionate about this area, please, please, please let me know. Um, it's something that I, I'm not as familiar with in terms of Boston, but I would definitely love to start um, digging deep into this to see how we can kind of improve. And um, establish your seat at the table. So some of the individuals that I showed you, um, they're again, really passionate and forging a way for creatives um, in creative spaces, whether it be advertising, marketing, and fashion. And Brandis, the first woman that I showed you, she, as I mentioned, she has a podcast called The Great Girlfriends. And she was discussing how she kind of looks for mentors. Um, she said she looks for mentors who she wants to eventually sit at the table with and be a peer with and relate on a singular level as a peer, right? And I thought about that and I think I'm gonna take on that philosophy as well. I think it's important to look for mentors and leaders who you eventually wanna sit at the table with, if, and especially if you're confronting an issue like um, diversity, it's important to be able to sit at the table with those people who actually are change makers, who actually are um, make it in, making a dent in such a huge issue in diversity. Um, it's just important to really take action. So again, if you are someone who's really passionate about this, who want, who would want to put on an event, whatever it may be, please, please, please let me know. So with that being said, thank you. <laughs> so great to see all of you this morning. Um, here is my contact information, Loa Bell on all um, social, and then Loa's Look Look is my website. I hope that wasn't boring for you. <laughs> But if you're interested in any of the work I'm doing today, I, I didn't share much about what I'm doing today, but I do a lot of freelance. So if you just want to chat, please do let me know. And it's been great seeing all your beautiful faces today. <laughs>
folks would like to do some. We're technically out of time, but okay. So uh, <laughs> let's do like three or four questions if anybody has them. Uh, no pressure if you don't. If you need to run to your job, do it. Don't feel awkward or uncomfortable. Cool. All right. Uh, just raise your hand if you have a question, and our girl will get to it. Any questions? Yeah. So you talked about kind of realizing in college at Cornell that you were the only black girl in the room. Did you realize it before then, or did you only, like, was that the kind of haha moment where you looked around? Yeah. Um, I, I definitely am used to being one of the few, um, just growing up with the schools that I've been to. Um, but I think when you get into uh, the classroom setting and, and you want to actually enter that space as a professional, I think that's when it began to hit me like, oh, I don't see a lot of people actually doing it. Um, I know lots of black girls who are interested in fashion, but it, but as you rise up and, and go to those fashion weeks and go to those shows, you don't see very many. So I think as I was taking on internships and as I was actually entering the field and seeing what was really, really out there, I started to realize, oh, what's going on? Like, I know this is a, a, play, a thing that my friends are interested in. I know black girls, plenty of black girls who are interested in this field, but I just wasn't seeing it actually out there. I have a follow-up yeah. question. Yeah. I'm starting to get into this idea of like push and pull. Yeah. Um, I'm dealing with entrepreneurship stuff. And I'm kind of wondering what in your like earlier life, if you if you have thought about reflecting on this, gave you the compulsion and, and the desire to kind of go somewhere where you weren't seeing other people like you? Um, I think a lot of it came from my mom because she she wanted to kind of pursue this kind of, um, career and her parents were kind of like do something else like you know those those careers that are more secure or whatnot so that was kind of one of the things that pushed me and I think among my friends I have a lot of friends who are doctors lawyers no one's really doing what I do and I kind of embrace that I love that um, I get a lot of questions about what I do I mean they think I like travel from state to state and I have this incredibly like creative nowhere -y, life and everyone up here knows better than that right so um it's, it's cool to do something different but I, I also happen to be passionate about it so it doesn't make it hard at all um but I mean creativity I think a lot of people on the outside of it think that you know if you have this free spirit and creative ideas it, it's easy but it, it's a huge challenge to stand out in creative field so that's always been something that pushes me forward yeah. mm -hmm. um so, you know, there's, uh, so going back to kind of this idea of mystery, right? And, um, you know, they, okay, so right, you're like walking through the door and there's a mystery novel and you're with the, the protagonist, right? And you're coming through and they're just about to find out who killed Becky, right? And so like, <laughs> so you're like how to open the door and like, but, like the creative process is just like that, right? Mm -hmm. So you're like, oh my God, I'm about to find out like if what I'm about to dump on the table, the computer, the paper is like, you know, and so your heart is racing. Yeah. And so how have you like allowed yourself to read the next line, right? Okay. Of who killed Becky? Like how do you like not hold yourself tight and then release it to put it out? Um, yeah. What are your techniques to doing oh, that, to releasing? That's, that's a great question. <laughs> I feel like I, people that are close to me would know, like, sometimes I'm the anxiety queen, right? I, I worry about things that I probably shouldn't worry about. Um, I'm indecisive about everything, you know? So that's a really, that's a hard question for me to answer, but something that I, like, kind of, my philosophy that I take in kind of all phases of life, I got to that point in college where I was like, why am I stressing out about XYZ exam or XYZ presentation? What's the worst that, it, that could really happen? Like, what it, what's the worst that could happen? I'm not gonna die after this, right? So all I can do is present my best idea, prepare as hard as I can possibly prepare, come up with the best solution I can for my users, come up with the best, you know, creative brief, come up with the best, um, and if it sucks, it sucks. That's just part of being a creative. You saw the magazine, it sucks, <laughs> <laughs> right? But you can't get hung up on that because you know, you know that down the line in your career, you're gonna be better at whatever it was that you were doing. 
and that's that's kind of what propels me. I don't. I really, really, really try not to overthink it. And there's always going to be those people that are that stress out more than you who are trying to bring you along. Stress out together. <laughs> more difficult than it has to be, right? But, I mean, that creative process is just like it's it's ongoing. Once you get to that point where you're like. This is a phase I'm in. I know that like five years, two years, a year from now, I'm gonna be even more amazing at this. So that propels me for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's do one last one in the back if we can. Hi, thanks for taking us on your journey. Yeah. Uh, wondering if you could talk a little bit more about collaboration, you know, that, that marriage of, uh, of design, user interface, and, um, and, 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 and text, and the yeah. words. Yeah. You know, how, how do you get that down and uh, the, the dynamic of how that comes about? Yeah, so um, the, do you mean the collaboration of the actual design pieces or the people? Um, the, 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 the people to get to the design. Yeah. yeah, so Wayfair is huge. I would say Wayfair has been the most collaboration I've experienced um, thus far. And um, we do a, a lot of collaboration like on every piece of work um, that we encounter. And I find that it's, it's awesome. It's really awesome because you have the power to kind of be autonomous over your work, but you know you can always bring it to someone else to kind of get feedback. Um, I mean, there are obviously there's, there's scenarios where you wish you could have a little more wiggle room and not have to ask all these stakeholders um, before you come to a solution. So I find that like other projects that I may take on and allow me to kind of have that more flexibility um, but I think like a lot of our collaboration kind of just starts with the user. It starts with the user and thinking about like we, we a lot of Wayfair is very young. Um, and I know that's, that's not just unique to Wayfair. We're very young and we're servicing um, a customer base that's kind of like middle aged women. And there are not a lot of those at Wayfair, right? So how do we collaborate <laughs> and how do we collaborate and deliver for those people in the best way possible? So, Collaboration can also be like limiting if you're looking too much into each other. Like we're a bunch of millennials in a room and we're trying to come up to, you know, to some solution that none of us will be using as much as that middle-aged woman. Like what are we doing? You know, we need to look to our users, we need to go user test, we need to ask more questions. So I think being aware of like the benefits of collaboration and also like the non-benefits um, are very important. But I love collaboration. I love those environments um, where we can just have a stand up, talk about some projects, sit back down, and whittle down on that project you're working on. So I love both sides to that world. Thanks. Yeah. All right, everybody, one more round of applause. For <laughs>